Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. If you are one of the very unsettled souls that attempted to see this video live and it didn't happen, it's because Google will not allow me to remain online long enough to do anything. So now you're going to have to click the link and it didn't work, did it? Nope. You're watching this one because I uploaded it. Because I record on more than one camera because I know that Google sucks and I don't trust it. Um, can anybody listening to this give me a uh, the name of the poet? I wrote... Um, let me make sure I the way the exact spelling. There is a poem, and nobody's getting the joke. When I when I originally posted the link, I've had two people tell me that I spelled Malaysia wrong. I did not spell Malaysia wrong. It's a quote from a poem, and I absolutely cannot for the life of me think what it is. But it was something to the effect of nothing works in Malaya place or Malaysia place. Or does it, If anybody out there could tell me what poem that is, I would love to know. That is why the show is named as it is, but I'm probably going to change it because nobody has any idea what I'm referencing. Dailymail.co.uk did the pilot commit suicide? Uh, CA boss says it's one theory that he's looking at as the Malaysian police are carrying out the psychological profiles of everyone in the plane. Friends, I haven't covered this for a number of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, everybody else is. Second of all, um, I thought it was going to be just a plane crash. Having trouble finding it, but a plane crash. Then... I began to look at some of the, the inconsistencies here and some of the really asinine things that have led to what we know so far. So I have decided to cover it for that reason. Authorities are investigating the possibility that the pilot of the missing Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 committed suicide, the director of the CIA has revealed. And again, we had some lunatic do this before. Uh, John Brennan, head of the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, said, I think that you cannot discount any theory when asked if it was possible that the pilot deliberately crashed the Boeing 777. That's not suicide, that's murder, he was not alone. His intervention came as Malaysian police say they are carrying out psychological profiles of everyone on board the plane, which vanished on Saturday, carrying 239 people after taking off from Kuala Lumpur en route to Beijing. The theory could offer an explanation as to how the plane disappeared from civilian radar tracking in the movements, as the pilot would simply switched off the transponder before he vanished. Why in seven hells is anyone allowed to shut the transponder off for a jet airline? Stupidity, right there. Right there, you have cause number one. Right there, you have the first step in stupidity. So anybody, you know, that, that decides they want to commit suicide that day can just shut the transponder off, and we have no idea where it is. Second of all, another BS point, if it had crashed into the ocean, we would have some kind of debris. This article in Daily Mail says the mid-air explosion, not likely no debris. Terrorist attack, no debris. Power failure, what? It didn't blow up when it hit? It just fell, right? Electronic warfare. Again, where is the wreckage? Hijacking, pilot error, structural failure, pilot suicide, aeronautical black hole. He also said that terrorism could not be ruled out. That we know. So, where is these terrorists possibly coming from? Well, we know, we automatically know that China has been dealing with Islamist idiots. I don't mean Islamists. I mean Islamist idiots. There's a difference. The ones that like to blow people up, stab people, uh, it's very likely that they've done something here. But I want to go into another article on this from CNN.com. Satellite looking into missing Malaysia flight detects suspected crash area. Uh, many of you probably have already heard about this, but there's something buried in the article that I'm very, very interested to see how in seven hells this happened. A Chinese satellite probing the mysterious disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 observed a suspected crash area at sea. A Chinese government agency said a potentially pivotal lead into what this far has been a frustrating and fruitless search. China's State Administration for Science, Technology, and Industry for National Defense announced the discovery, including images of what it said were three suspected floating objects. Uh, they were, uh, f like, 43 by 59 feet, 79 by 72 feet, and 46 by 62 feet. So they're rather substantial pieces of wreckage. 
Um, the images were captured around 11 a.m. on March 9th. It is now the 12th when this was written. It's the 13th when I'm doing this show. The images were captured around 11 a.m. on March 9th, the day after the plane was missing, but weren't released until Wednesday. That doesn't seem a little bit unusual to anyone, especially when it's mostly Chinese people that are missing. That doesn't seem just a little bit strange to you. The Chinese agency gave coordinates of 105.63 east longitude, 6.7 north latitude, which would put it in waters northeast of where it took off at Kulua, Nepal, Malaysia, the south of Vietnam, near where the South China Sea meets the Gulf of Thailand. Look how they just gloss right over that on CNN. The images were captured around 11 a.m. on March 9th, the day after the plane went missing, but weren't released until Wednesday. No wonder if family people are furious at this. Um, this doesn't make any sense. You can shut the transponder off on an airplane. The governments of the world don't have the technology to follow it. Uh, the military does, but for some reason, it didn't. So, you know, you can steal an airplane and just fly wherever you want to, and the U.S. government can't do a damn thing about it. Neither can China. That's amazing. Uh, neither can Indonesia. Neither can Malaysia. Neither can Korea. And this is just amazing to me. E-bomb, the electronic weapon that can make a plane disappear by Mike Slavo. Now, before you criticize the theory, and I am not saying that this is what happened, do look at the video. So go to Max Lavo, uh, shtfpplan.com, and look up the videos of people using e-bombs before you criticize what the man writes in the article. Because I thought it was crazy too, and then I looked it up and it's not so far-fetched. Over a dozen nations have now mobilized uh, search teams for Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. The mysterious disappearance has left investigators all over the world wondering what could have happened. There are no debris to be found. The black box, which is supposed to be indestructible in a large explosion and should broadcast a homing signal for up to 30 days, has gone dark, which is what a pulse weapon would do. Moreover, Interpol is looking into several passengers who boarded the plane using fake passports. Yeah, they're also looking at a pilot that let some girl sit in his lap while he was flying a plane. I guarantee that's not what caused it to crash. Um, it says, of course, terrorism hasn't been ruled out. So let's look at some of the options we have here. Um, we know that it can't be a crash because we're not seeing debris scattered all over the place, especially anything from a high, uh, from a high altitude. Well, normally electromagnetic pulses are nuclear, almost always. They're set up in the upper atmosphere, uh, maybe uh, I don't know, might be considered the outer reach reaches of space. And it's detonated, and it creates an electrical pulse that can uh, kill anything electronic within its radius. Anything it hits is, is juiced. It's gone. It's over. Um, they have ways now that are non-nuclear electromagnetic pulse weapons. And there are images of people using these weapons before you laugh at the author. And uh, this is basically... Let me find the exact quote here. This is looking... Like, the only thing that could quite possibly bring a plane down so quickly that there wouldn't be any debris, or there would be debris, but that they wouldn't have found it because it would be clumped too closely together, unlike a high-altitude crash. The other interesting aspect is that this would stop the black box, and it would immediately make it impossible for the people flying the plane to say anything back to Tower. And the last thing said was, Roger that. So, this answers all of the questions. No other theory answers any of the questions. Weapons designers specializing in high-energy physics can now create electromagnetic pulses without going into outer space. One approach involves harnessing the force of conventional explosions. Others are simply just modifications of radar, which bounces pulses of energy off of aircraft in flight, vehicles on the ground, and other objects. It goes on, if you crank up that power, you have an EMP weapon, ready to point at your computers of your favorite enemies. 
This knowledge has set off a new arms race. Whether fitted for cruise missiles or parked at the side of the road in the van, non-nuclear EMP weapons have the potential to devastate the electronic systems of area as large as a city or as small as a selected building, all without being seen, heard, or felt by a single soul. It says, does it sound far-fetched? It did not sound far-fetched in 1993 to the owners of automobiles parked 300 meters from the U.S. defense contractor's EMP generator test site at El Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. Their alternators and electric en electronic engine controls were accidentally fried by the pulse during trials. You want to laugh about it? Go ahead and laugh about it. But do me a favor and let me know any other theory. I've heard aliens. Um, there would be, and this is interesting too, insofar as it affects themselves, a non-nuclear EMP would explain how the plane came from one second to the next, simply vanishing without a trace. There would be no large debris field because the plane would have fallen right out of the sky. So instead of a search over square miles, we'd be looking at mere yards. And that is very difficult on a huge ocean. A homing device in the black box, which, as far as we can tell, is not shielded against EMP blast, would, just as the plane's instrumentation and communications equipment, short-circuit and would become inoperable. No explosions or missile signature would have been detected by the monitoring system. So, other than the really odd phone calls, which, like I mentioned yesterday, have been getting through to, uh, you know, again, if the plane's underwater, they shouldn't be going to the phone. It is interesting. Um, it's very, very interesting. Am I saying that this is what happened? No, but I'm saying it offers up the best number of questions, best number of answers to the questions that we don't have answers to. It answers everything but the cell phone question. Friends, if you're in Canton, Ohio, do me a favor, go to the Arcadia Grill and uh, enjoy. It's on Court Avenue. You'll get some of the best food that you've ever eaten. They got a full bar making drinks the way you like them. You know, they remember to put the alcohol in. So when you're in Canton, or even if you're within a couple of hours, it's worth the drive. Go to the Arcadia Grill and enjoy some delicious food. Tell them you heard about it on The Correct Views. Also, look up the work of Mike McLaughlin. Who is he? Mike M-A-C, laugh, L-A-U-G-H, Lynn, L-I-N. He's a fiction writer, and he sells his stories on Facebook. And what? he's really good. He's, he's even started doing poetry and stuff. So get a hold of him. Let him know. Uh, fair price, definitely cheaper than buying most paperbacks. He'll set you up with a whole bunch of source stories, and you can read them uh, while you write to your Arcadia Grill. Friends, the Daily Sheeple.com just because they can, it says a man blew a 0, 0.0 on a breath test. For you uh, Lady Gaga fans, that's zero. Uh, cops charged him with a DUI anyway. And I've said forever, the DUI laws in this country are nothing about your safety and only about stealing your money. Um, and this is further proof. An Austin, Texas man was charged with a DWI last January, even though he took a breath test that cleared him of having alcohol in his system. Cops cited Austin's take no chances policy, which might as well be called the because we can policy. It took over a year for the charges against Larry Davis to be dropped despite his voluntary roadside breath test and despite the blood test that also cleared him of not only alcohol, but seven other drugs. Davis has been pulled over for he'd been pulled over for running a stop sign. As ridiculous as it sounds, it is far from the first time that this has happened in Austin. It appears to be a trend with the APD. The defenders, a team of investigative journalists for the city's local station QVUE, reports that the Austin PD has a track record of sending a lot of cases like this to court where they are quickly dismissed. This is disgusting. The defenders first reported cases like this in 11 join Austin American Statesman investigation. One case was that of Bianca Fuentes, who blew below the legal limit of 0.08 in a breath test. At the time, county prosecutors were dismissing about 30% of drunk driving cases, getting that money for the court costs, though. More than any other major Texas county, because they said the APD was bringing them weak cases and it wouldn't hold up in court. Um, it says the Defenders Review finds similar statistics in 2013. Out of 5,468 new DUI cases, 1,559, a little less than 30% were dismissed. You know what my cure is? If you get a DUI, we need to get like, I don't know, maybe a third of the drivers in any one state. To all promise, not under any circumstances, to pay any fine, any ticket, any license renewal, any DUI, any anything, and you just keep driving. 
If a few of us do it, we're going to jail. If all of us do it, they can't stop us all. And then they're only going to go after the most egregious offenders, which is the way it's supposed to be. As ridiculous as the incident is, it said it's important to note that Mr. Davis or any other person unjustly accused in this fashion would need to secure an attorney, would have to miss work for court days, preparation and appointments, and would have to discharge hanging over him, causing stress and embarrassment for the entire time. Mr. Davis and his attorney plan to file a grievance against the arresting officer now that the case has finally been dismissed 13 months later. I hope they sue them blind. Um, we're going to go to the freethoughtproject.com. State passes law to legalize shooting police. I'm not in favor of shooting police. I'm not saying that. But there are times when police need to be shot. When they are no longer working for the people or even the police department, and are working for themselves and their own sadistic purposes. In other, time, in other words, when the cop is the criminal. Let's be clear. Finally, some rational legislation is passed concerning public servants lawfully entering a person's property. All too often we see examples of cops breaking into the wrong house and shooting the family dog, or worse yet, killing a member of the family. There are links to it. Well, Indiana has taken action to recognize the unique character of a citizen's home and to ensure that a citizen feels secure in his or her own home against unlawful intrusion by another individual or public servant. This special amendment is no revolutionary new thought, only common sense. Self-defense is a natural right. When laws are in place to protect incompetent police by removing one's ability to protect oneself simply because the aggressor has a badge and a uniform, this is a human rights violation. Amen! Indiana is leading the way by recognizing the right of creating legislation to protect it. If someone breaks into your house, you have a right to shoot them. Of course, cops have already begun to fearmonger the passage of the bill. If I pull over a car and I walk up to it and the guy shoots me, he's going to say, well, he was trying to illegally enter my property. Why did Joseph Hubbard, 40 president of Jeffersonsville Fraternal Order of Police Logo 100, quit pulling people over for garbage? Somebody is going to get away with killing a cop because of this law, where you get away with killing us all the time. Instead of looking at the beneficial aspect of this law, which creates the incentive for police to act responsibly and just, Hubbard takes the higher-than-thou attitude and is simply worried about himself. How about questioning the immoral laws that you are enforcing in the first place? Or how about sympathizing with the innocent people whose pets and family members have been slain due to police negligence? Police, stay the hell out of our homes! Stay out of our cars! Uh, Washington's blog, uh, are the American people finally starting to stand up to those who are trying to take away our liberties? Americans are starting to wake up from our fear-induced haze. We don't buy the jurisdictions for mass surveillance. For the first time since 9-11, we value privacy more than anti-terror protections, and we are sick of war and no longer falling for the government's pro-war arguments. There are links to everything I just said in the article. Indeed, the American people are starting to actively push back against those who want to strip us of our basic freedoms. University of Tennessee law professor Glenn Harlan Reynolds wrote last week at the USA Today, America's ruling class have been experiencing more pushback than usual lately. It might just be a harbinger of things to come. First, in response to widespread protests last week, the Department of Homeland Security canceled plans to build a nationwide license plate database. But the proposal was suddenly withdrawn last week with the unconvincing explanation that it was all a mistake. Aw, oh, people didn't have anything to do with it. I'm inclined to agree with Tech Dirt's Tim Cushing, it says, who wrote, The most plausible explanation is that someone up top at the DHS or ICE suddenly realized that publicly calling for bids to a nationwide surveillance system while nationwide surveillance systems are being hotly debated was a horrible idea. So, I mean, it's good news. Basically, people are waking up and they're getting angry about the kinds of things that I talk about on this show all the time, which is good. It makes me want to keep doing them. It says, the pushback has gone so far that on January 17th, President Obama announced revisions to the NSA's data collection programs, including withdrawing the agency's custody for domestic telephone record database, expanding requirements for judicial warrants, and ceasing to spy on undefined friendly foreign leaders. We need to remember how hard it was to get Obama on the side of liberty, and we need to use this to our advantage when Hillary runs, because let's not forget she was part of his administration. Condoleezza Rice can't even speak at a college today without somebody having a fit. Look it up. 
So uh, I don't think uh, if she can be that blackballed and blacklisted for working for Bush, I don't see how a greater war criminal such as Obama can, uh, it cannot be a detriment to Shrillery. It says, uh, similarly, Mike Lofgren, a former GOP congressional staff member with the powerful House and Senate Budget Committee, points out that the American people are starting to push back against the deep state which has operated without regard to the Constitution or the good people for far too long. Very, very, very good to hear. He's not on the side of the good of the people at all. I mean, he might be. The government itself has been a horrible um, injustice to the people now. What? Since well before Obama took office, he's just made it worse. Friends, the last story I'm going to get to, the dumdy of the day, uh, goes to Putin. Is there any surprise? Let me be clear on something here, friends. I believe that America needs to leave Russia, the Ukraine, and Crimea the hell alone. It's none of our business. I also think that Putin is a piece of human garbage. I have very little sympathy for the idiots in the Ukraine. If you can't decide whether you want to be run by the communist jerk Putin or join the bankrupt morally and uh, financially EU if you can't decide to govern your damn selves, and I don't have any sympathy for you, but Vladimir Putin has brought the stupidity to a whole new level. He wants to build many nuclear power plants in Iran. He wants to help them do it. Let's forget about the fact that they want to dirty bomb Israel and everybody else, and again, it's been spoken of countless times on this show. Let's forget about all that. Let's think about the fact that they're building it on an earthquake zone. The most, one of the most active earthquake zones in the world right now. They are predicting a massive earthquake there. There has already been a math, massive earthquake there. I called that about uh, three or four months at the most before it happened. And now, wait till you hear why the great idiot Vladimir Putin thinks it's a good idea. Tehran. Russia has signed a Pre, uh, preliminary agreement to build at least two more nuclear reactors in the Iranian port city of Bashur, Iran's official IRNA news agency reported on Wednesday. Yeah, because when it melts down, it won't affect Russia at all. Or maybe they're just so juiced from their earlier stupidity in Chernobyl not to know any better. Maybe that's what it is. Excuse me. Maybe Vladimir Putin's mental capacities have been dimmed down so bad due to the Chernobyl fallout damaging his mental capacities that he doesn't have any. The deal was reached during a visit to Tehran on Tuesday by a senior official of Russia's state atomic energy agency, Rashtam IRNA, said. Great, two of the sleaziest leaderships in the entire side of the globe getting together. You notice I didn't say Obama wasn't sleazy, he's just on the other side of the globe. Iran and uh, uh, the two new 1,000 megawatt plants will be constructed alongside the existing power station at Bashur, which was also built by Russia, Kamal. Kamal Vlandi said, yeah, well, Russia is great at building nuclear power plants. Just ask Belarus. Just ask um, Mevik when they melted down the, the, the other plutonium place. Russia has a history of doing wonderful things with nuclear. Further talks will be held on technical and financial aspects on the project, but the final agreement is expected to be signed very soon, he added. In January, Iranian President dreadful Hassan Rouhani told his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin that establishing long-term relations between the two countries can serve the stability and security of the region. Well, yeah, you can, had, you can hand potassium iodide back and forth over the border when you melt the plant down. Remember, it was the earthquake that shut down the nuke, the cause of the meltdown, at least one of them, in Fukushima. It was not the tidal wave it was the earthquake, and they are predicting an earthquake of that magnitude in this region. Iranian media last month speculated that Rouhani could travel to Russia for a regional conference of Caspian Sea states that Tehran's envoy to Moscow will be set for late September. The construction of the new Bashir nuclear plant is likely to spark concerns among Gulf Arab states. You think? which have often raised concerns about the reliability of the existing Bashir facility and the risk of radioactive leaks in case of a major earthquake. Let's remember that these dumbasses have already caused a leak from it once, and it's not even operational fully yet. Iran sits astride several major fault lines and is prone to frequent earthquakes. 
On April 9th, a 6.9 magnitude quake rocked the south with an epicenter of 60 miles from Bashur. Both Iranian and Russia, both Iran and Russia have dismissed the claim. Get ready for it. Here's why he's getting the dumb D of the day. Saying the Bashur facility is subject to inspection by and the safeguards of the International Atomic Energy Agency, the UN watchdog. The UN, there, it's okay because the UN says it's okay. The UN had did such a great job with the United States, with Libya, which has had a great country, now they're hell, um, with Iran so far, with Russia so far, with the Ukraine so far, with Iran, with Afghanistan. The UN has done such a great job by telling you that man-made global warming is happening when we all know that it isn't. The UN did such a great job with Fukushima that we're still dealing with it worse than ever. They can tell you that it's safe. Vladimir Putin, you win the dumdy of the day. You're one of the stupidest leaders that's ever lived, you freaking dolt. Good night, friends. God bless. Thank you for listening to The Correct Views. Make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself. We're always posting up there all the time. Check out the Saturday edition at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I have news from the science front, and it's its own little show segment in the Saturday show. So tune in at TheMediaSpeaks.com. Thank you, friends. Good night. God bless.